Hey, what's up? It's Jim, and I just got back from the new film, Begin Again. Begin Again is very naive. It's very naive about the music industry. It's naive about music itself. And it's kind of naive that they think they can pass a film like this as something that's indie when it's the mainstream Hollywood kind of fluff drama that studios used to make. But I guess when we make them now, we call them smaller indie movies. I think a better example of kind of a Hollywood making a smaller kind of movie film would be Chef, which is a film I liked quite a bit. This is kind of the other end, although it's not as irritating as that kind of a film can be. John Carney, who directed Once, this is his follow-up, even though he actually did do a film between Once and Begin Again. This is kind of the more Hollywood version of Once, kind of like the she's the one to the Brothers McMullen, if you will. It has that whole spirit throughout it, like a film that people think is a smaller, dear drama, but has movie stars. And that's kind of the whole naivete runs throughout this whole film. A young singer-songwriter played by Kira Knightley named Greta, who one night goes up and sings one of her songs at an open mic night at the behest of her friend, played by James Corden, and then Dan, played by Mark Ruffalo, who has been drinking all day and has just been fired from the label. He helps set up, hears it, and realizes he must produce her, and they go out and record a demo so she can get signed, but they don't record it any usual way, oh no. They record it on the streets of New York, recording each different song in a different location in New York so they can get some of the ambiance and sounds of New York on the album as she plays after he has been fired from his label and she has been dumped by her now famous singer boyfriend played by Adam Levine who uh, got famous for his song in a film which they never actually tell you what kind of movie it is it's just called a movie and a film which maybe that was its title which would have been entertaining but she gets dumped by him and she needs to begin again literally and figuratively i guess make this album and kind of show that he can love music again and that she can have faith in herself and her songwriting the acting sells a lot of this for the most part you do have a lot of charismatic actors selling a lot of this because it's so much like you know music can bring us together it's kind of the whole Judy Garland, uh, Mickey Rooney idea that like, let's put on a show and everyone will be happy kind of idea throughout it. It's kind of funny, it acts like what it's doing is wholly original, but that's Hollywood for you. It's kind of Hollywood trying to recapture the past and doing kind of a smaller type of movie, even though this was, I think, made independently, it feels very Hollywood to me. It has this whole idea about selling out when it is a film that John Carney is selling out a lot more than he did with Once, which was a small $100,000 film. And this film, I think $100,000 went to renting the car that Mark Ruffalo drives in the film. And it has this whole ideal that music shouldn't be about the images and like, what does the record company do? And all the record company mumbo jumbo ruins music and it shouldn't be about the marketing or the singles or the videos or anything like that but kind of lives in this world of a music business that I don't think exists now but also it's just like you say you hate that world but yet you're not making a small movie you've made a big movie with two people who are in two of the highest grossing films of all time you're clearly not making a small movie and you clearly kind of have bought into the system and then made a film about people who are trying to fight the system, but clearly are not, because their whole ideal is to go into it. It's kind of naively believing in this logic that this music can bring us together and they can be real. It kind of works, but it's so Hollywood phony and cheesy that I could never really get into it. I think the charisma of the actors helps with that. Kira Knightley, I thought, did a fairly good job, but her best moments were actually her and James Gordon hanging out. Whereas like the only time I felt she was really genuine, I actually think she's grown a lot as an actress since she's been in the Pirates of the Caribbean films. I felt more like she was an actress in kind of a fluffy Hollywood movie like this. Mark Ruffalo is simply just playing the same role he played in The Kids Are All Right. It's kind of like his role, his disgruntled, loner, crazy guy. It's not that much better. I liked Haley Steinfeld and I love James Corden. He's got charisma to spare. I wish they'd probably used him more. Adam Levine had this fake beard going on through part of it, which was kind of laughable. The only musician I particularly liked was CeeLo Green. This film believes so much that you will believe in it. And also the thing about like let's make this music that's not like studio like different like real but it's written by some of the people who write like songs for like 
Adele and have written big hit songs. It doesn't sound like anything that different or inspiring. Certainly it's a Hollywood movie and they can't bank on someone being an amazing musician who's different, but it kind of rings true to the fact that this isn't as genuine. It's like almost like pre-calculated to win you over. That's kind of what I really don't like about it. Its view of New York is certainly a tourist view of New York, which works for Keira Knightley, but does not work for Mark Ruffalo, who supposedly lived in New York all these times. Like, the f nobody goes to Times Square, dude. Like, what's that about? It's kind of romanticism of that is kind of the similar to its romanticism of music. Had John Carney showed he could do something different, but it feels almost like he's retreated to doing something he knows he can have kind of a substantial hit with. It wants to preach all this stuff. It wants to preach that it's different, like I'm not going to sell out and everything like that. And who needs the music industry, even though it's clearly gotten hit songwriters to have a good soundtrack so they can sell lots of copies to it. I can't believe their bullshit. If you have a great movie musical, and I believe in the song, and I believe in the characters even though it's cheesy, I think that's more of an accomplishment. But this film never got me, you know, it just felt too Hollywood, too cheesy. I wasn't a huge fan of Once. I kind of find Once a lot more genuine. The characters in Begin Again thought they were in Once, but they're not. They're in this movie. I can like things that a mainstream audience likes, but I think this film is so phony in what it's trying to sell you that I could never really buy it. And the charisma of the actors makes it enjoyable while you're going through it. And I think it kind of sells itself for the most part. But if you have any sort of brain inside you and you really start to think about it and you know anything about how music works or life, the whole idea of selling out, which is like certainly a stupid teen concept in itself, makes you kind of roll your eyes at this whole idea. I think I saw a quote in the ads that it's like, finally a summer blockbuster for the rest of us. But the funny thing is that's kind of true because it's as phony as The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Except The Amazing Spider-Man 2 is more upfront about itself, whereas this film is selling itself as like an alternative, more real, real to life, when in fact it's about as realistic and about as true to life as The Amazing Spider-Man 2. It really would like you to believe it's not, even though it's probably just as calculated as a big summer blockbuster is. So if you've seen Begin Again and you would like to talk about it, then comment below in the comments and subscribe if you would like to.